It's time to take the nitro blender. Let's make it a little bit safer. What we're going to work on today is we're going to make sure that this belt can't come over and knock these oil lines off. Now, eventually what we're also going to do is run the fuel lines down in that same area, but we want them to be protected because when you're whacking the gas on this thing and you're running one of these kinds of belts right here, you take a chance of maybe breaking it. I mean, the last thing you want to do is sew the belt off this thing, knock the oil lines off, and then have an oil down in somebody's backyard. Our next project is going to be encasing all these pulleys and bearing supports that power these blenders here in the back. Now, we put 30 pounds of ice in each one of these things, and we'll make some margaritas, pina coladas, you name it. Whatever you want, they're going to make it in these things, but we want to make sure that all this stuff stays contained. So I'm going to be taking some 70 thou titanium making big radiuses and fixing this thing up. Now, what's also gonna help this belt situation is, is putting a real belt on it, a star racer belt. And believe me, they work. So in order to make this belt guard, I'm gonna go from each side of the chassis and I'm going to take some, you know, some 065 half inch chromoly. I've kind of already made a shape here. I wanna make sure that it's right. This is gonna be the pattern, uh, how I'm gonna bend this chromoly to make this uh, support bracket. Now I don't have a bunch of half inch dies and things like that for my bender. So I'll just take a bigger die and I'll wrap that half inch around it. It actually does work. You just gotta make sure that it's staying centered in the die while you're doing it, or it'll, you know, it'll pull that uh, piece of tubing around there on an angle and it'll be somewhat twisted. But, um, you know, a buddy of mine showed me this trick a while back and it works, so I just continue to use it. So the basic shape I'm trying to make here is, is that the belt is actually 90 degrees on one side and then on the other side, you know, it's slanted probably about 75 degrees on the side that has the idler. So I'm going to try and mimic that. So onto the drawing board here. Basically, you know, last time you've seen this uh, jig table, it had a two seat uh, dragster on it and I was throwing a front end on it, but they're pretty universal. Uh, so basically I'm just gonna make this thing simulate what the frame rails are on the nitro blender. So basically what I'm gonna do is lay this out. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and tack these things down. People don't realize, you know, when you tack something like that, how much it draws it one direction or another. I just wanna make sure that these are parallel to the surface, uh, not parallel, but definitely 90 degrees uh, to the surface so it's basically represents the frame rails as best as they can. I also need to get a couple measurements here. Um, now that I have my fixture set up, uh, I know which way to measure how I've set it up on the table to what I need to know now, if that makes any kind of sense. Yeah, I want the belt as close to this um, device as much as I can just so it doesn't have a run at hitting it. The farther away it is, you know, the more that belt has a tendency to slap and hit something and then knock it out of the way. But you keep it close enough, it'll keep it contained. And the reason why we're doing this, we're just trying to protect these oil lines and we're actually trying to just keep it from flying, you know, down towards people's feet and that kind of thing. So it's 90 degrees on one side and about 75 on the other. And so it's gonna kind of look like this as it's setting in there. That circle there represents the pulley and it's gotta bend 90 degrees over each direction. Now, I don't have, uh, you know, this is just a rigid uh, uh, pipe bender basically for half inch, and it's all it has to bend this 065 uh, chromoly for sure. But they came out pretty decent, and the thing is you gotta make two of them. You gotta make them exact, because what I'm gonna do next is uh, I'm gonna make the saddles, which are gonna go up against the frame rails that this is gonna weld to. You've seen this all before in my other videos, but look at this thing. I just had to do a little sliver of pipe. That's how good this thing cuts. It's a Henshaw, and if you're ever going to have one, definitely get one of this brand. It does work well, and no, they don't actually give me anything to say that. I just want to see you guys get some good equipment if you're going to buy something. So this is how I polish my tubing. On the lathe, generally with my uh, my little belt sander deal that I have here that attaches to a 90 degree uh, angle grinder. Anyway, this is the piece. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna split it, but I just marked it with the lathe cutting tool so I can just set this up in my bandsaw and 
try not to take my fingers off and slice this thing in half. Then I take them over to my little belt sander, true them up real nice, put some radiuses on them, that kind of thing. And then we're going to put those on uh, the fixture table so that we can weld to them. Now, this is what they're gonna look like on the blender itself. They'll be setting uh, on the frame rails, uh, just like this on the inside. And then the piece will weld to these actual pieces. So what I'll do is I'll hose clamp these on uh, to my setup and then I'll measure my pieces uh, where I need to cut these things and then I'm going to take these over to the belt sander and we're going to notch those uh, for that inch and a quarter tube. It just couldn't get them into my uh, my other machine to get a good notch on these things because I've already bent them up and I'm not cool enough to figure all the radius of bins and the lengths of the tube to make it right to begin with. So, but this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna space these apart. So this whole section is gonna be about three inches wide. I threw them up on the Herco, these spacers, and used a half inch roughing mill. And that way, so we have a nice uh, you know, miter cut, if you wanna say, uh, for these things to sit on. So it'll be sitting like this, there'll be three of them. And then we'll tack this all together. And you can see I knocked it off one time. I think I knocked it off one more, yep. And I'm trying to be real delicate with it because when you start welding on something that's sprung and bent like this, it can take off pretty fast. So I chased it around the piece quite a bit while welding it. So now I'm going to weld it to the actual uh, pieces that are gonna sit inside the frame rail. So I've you know just basically made some spacers here to get it in the center of those two pieces. Now on to the next part of this. I'm gonna use some 65, 70 thou titanium to go around these pulleys and stuff. Now, my stomp shear will not cut this stuff. And this is what I use. Basically, it's a skill saw that's made for cutting some serious metal. I've cut four inch aluminum with this thing before. And it has a laser line on it, the whole nine yards. And titanium is a handful uh, for this thing. Matter of fact, it's a handful for about anything to cut. And this is what I use. So you do have to go back and doctor up the edges. And so this is uh, my slip roll that I use to make my radiuses. And it actually bends this titanium fairly easy. But uh, just getting that right, you know, I need a seven inch diameter, you know, uh, circle on the end of this thing to go around the edges of this pulley setup. Now, believe me, I did not hit this on the first note. Now, I didn't go too far or anything like that. I did run back and forth a couple different times, but I didn't figure you need to see me walking across the shop. But I tell you what, the fitment was pretty nice on this and it's gonna be very well protected. Um, so the next step is to duplicate this just for the other side. You know, when drilling titanium, I start out with a very small bit, uh, high speed, and then, you know, if I'm gonna drill a hole, I'm gonna use a unibit, and it cuts through titanium the best. It, just throw away your, your other drill bits when doing titanium, a unibit is the shit. So when I have a radius like that, I'll start on one end, and then I'll just wrap it and work my way along to find bolt hole locations and things like that. Um, it just seems like if you lay it all out at once and you have a radius, all of a sudden you're, you know, a quarter of a hole off or something. So I tighten it on one end and I pull it and just do it that way. And it generally works out pretty good. Now, if I have a small piece of tie that I'm gonna cut, I use some air shears. Um, these are some old snap-on air shears I've had forever, and I had to work at it a little bit, but man, it does cut it off well. Um, here's just to prove to you, this is titanium. I don't see the white sparks on that puppy, but I always uh, sand them like that, and then I file them flat and, you know, radius the edge on them. Here's the other side, and I'll show you here real quickly. I'll mark where my bolt hole location is going to be, and then I'll show you what kind of fitment that this thing has. It actually, I think it came out pretty nice. Not too bad for an old guy, huh? Now in the blender, there's a couple spots on here that are carbon fiber. And so I had some carbon fiber uh, 
wrap that was left over from a project. So I thought I'd throw some on and it was like some chunks, okay? It's not the most perfect thing in the world and this thing's gotta get going on the road. So I'm kind of losing out on time a little bit, but this here's the end result on the blender setup on the backhand side. It's came out pretty damn nice. And here is the welded assembly for the blower belt uh, retainment. So Brian showed up to pick the blender up and they're getting ready to take off. But I wanted to show him, uh, you know, the final fitment of this piece on the bottom here. And we'll end up, you know, powder coating this thing or whatever. But it's pretty cool because I was able just to go inside the belt adjustment area here and just pry on this thing a little bit. And I was able just to pop this thing right in place. And generally what we'll do is like where his hand is, we'll put a hose clamp there just to hold it in place. But I don't think this is going to need it, man. It fits so nice. I was, I was really uh, pleased on how this thing came out. And this is how this thing travels. It's first class. <laughs> Again, this thing is on a national road trip right now. It's going to Topeka, Kansas this weekend. And then it's off to Brainerd, Minnesota, BRI. And it's going up there to be in the zoo up in Minnesota for NHRA National Day. So it should be a good time. This is when we had the blender at my uh, son's fifth uh, birthday party in the neighborhood. We worked some neighbors up. And it, was, it was pretty damn cool. But hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, happy blending to y'all.